new deck that I'm hoping we were uh, playing around pre-release and I have a couple of new cards from War of the Spark that uh, hopefully we can uh, see some play. We originally were thinking about playing Ban uh, Azorius Taxes this week, uh, not having a whole lot of uh, luck with it, but uh, last night started thinking about it and uh, nifty little combo. So a lot of people don't realize it. Um, I was talking to some people, didn't think that it actually worked, but it does. So uh, and that, that little combo is um, the Wanderer, this nice little uncommon Planeswalker. It says prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to you and other permanents you control. And uh, you get to exile target creature with power four or greater. Kind of stinks um, against the gods, but uh, I mean, it, it tucks them. Uh, won a few games today by uh, getting around that. And then uh, it, it works in tandem with this other card called Command the Dread Horde. Uh, choose any number of target creatures and or Planeswalker cards in graveyards. Command the Dread Horde deals damage to you equal to the total converted mana cost of those cards. Put them on the battlefield under your control. Uh, so the nice thing about this is with the Wanderer in play, you can pick every single creature and Planeswalker card in every graveyard and put it on the battlefield for six mana. Don't have to take any life for it. Uh, the, only, the only downside is that they do remove the Wanderer with, say, like, a Vraska's Contempt. Um, I, I mean, it does make things a little tricky. Uh, the instant speed removal for Planeswalkers is pretty bad. Uh, started off, uh, was originally trying to think of an Orzov style list. Uh, just play black white and try to fit a bunch of removal. Um, but this guy is just way too good not to play. Uh, literally splashing blue just for fall for wall of runes. Uh, taking two, playing wall of runes on turn one is really good. Uh, helping to play against something like the uh, red decks that are out there, especially on arena pretty prominent um and then it playing another one drop in barrier of bones uh it is a zero three but it does surveil so this scries this surveils uh for this particular deck i'd really like to see the surveil mechanic be on the wall of runes since it is a zero four body uh the four toughness is very relevant right now uh, there's a lot of three power creatures out there so barrier of bones only blocks once where wall of runes can, can potentially block multiple times. So I, you, you can't ask for a whole lot. Um, um, zero four walls are usually hard to come by. So next to the type taker, we just want something that replaces itself. Uh, it's pretty good in the two slot. It also slows uh, things like mono red down a little bit. So uh, then we have uh, revitalize. Uh, just, just a couple of pieces of card draw. Kind of gain some life just in case we do have to cast command the dread horde. Uh, without a Wanderer in play. So then we have Cast Down and Liliana's Triumph and Moment of Craving. With these three, they're actually just pieces of removal. Liliana's Triumph, you will notice there are two Liliana Dreadhorde General in here. Uh, I have not been able to cast this combination together because when this comes down, if it doesn't end the game in the first turn, it generally ends the game in the second turn. So people just can't have a way... Uh, to deal with this right now if you're not playing uh, it seems like you're not playing black so uh, after that we have the wanderer <clears throat> to enable our combo and then we have kaya's wrath uh nice thing about this most kaya's wraths have been played i i could say traditionally from what i've seen so far in uh esper lists that aren't typically playing creatures or they're very, playing very few creatures uh, this particular list, um, I'm playing quite a few creatures. So the second line of text in this, where it says you gain life, you the number of creatures you control this way, uh, or that were destroyed this way, is actually pretty good. Now the fact that you do get to command the Dread Horde, and then you can Kaya's Wrath. Uh, I think I gained 11 earlier when I was at 4, and just playing the Kaya's Wrath actually sealed the deal because I was able to follow the Kaya's Wrath up with another wall. And, and uh... Just took it from there. So uh, next we have uh, two gods uh, playing God Eternal Ketra. Uh, I think this god is really good. A three six with double strike is is okay. And the fact that it tucks itself, um, I should say it's better than okay. It's it's pretty good. It tucks itself when it gets exiled or when it dies. 
Uh, but the fact that anytime you play a one mana wall late in the game with Oketra on the battlefield, you get to make a 4 4 black zombie warrior creature token with vigilance. So, the nice thing to note if you take this and go turn 5 Oketra into, say, turn 6 Liliana, um, and, and you already have some stuff in the battlefield, you're drawing cards here, you get to play these back out once you play Command the Dreadhorde. So, a lot of cool things to do, and being able to just churn out creatures, so when you do have to minus 4 the Liliana, you don't feel bad about sacking a 4-4. Four four. Uh, next is God Eternal Bantu, another 5-mana god. It's a 5-6 with Menace. Uh, the nice thing about Bantu is that by the time you get to this curve point, you are needing to draw... You're needing to draw a lot of cards. I wish there was a spot that I could fit Chemistry's Insight. Uh, just to be able to draw a couple extra cards every turn if need be. Uh, having some mana open. Bantu actually fixes that. So if you get into the later games where you have 7, 8, 9, 10 mana onto the battlefield. Uh, you just keep drawing lands that happens to do what you do. You can draw God Eternal Bantu. Uh, you remember that your curve actually stops at 6. So you just sacrifice all the lands over the top of the six that are there and potentially any walls or maybe even a tithe taker that are sitting there. So refill your hand and start all over the following turn. Um, next is just another piece of good removal and Cleansing Nova. Uh, I chose Cleansing Nova over, say, Settle the Wreckage um, and also did not play uh, anything, if you'll notice, that exiles. Uh, we don't want anything to get exiled. So if Raskus Contempt is really bad in this deck, um, along with uh, the 3 mana, minus 2, minus 2, that exiles creatures when they die. So we don't even want that on there. Um, getting minus 2, minus 2, and then saying, you know, our opponent knows what they're what we're up to, uh, and we go to a moment of craving it, and they... Uh, you know, uh, kill it instead, whatever it be. Um, we don't gain any life, then they get to exile their guy, and we don't get to reanimate it with Command the Dread Horde. Um, and then, last uh, but not least, aside the combo piece, is Liliana Dread Horde General. Uh, this card, I think, is very good, and I'm not sure if two or three would be the right call. Uh, I think most decks are going to play either one of those two numbers. Uh, I think two is probably correct here for the simple fact that you don't want to draw it in multiples uh, because we are going trying to buy it back with Command the Dread Horde. But it does a lot and actually does win games. Uh, currently, I think I have uh, three cards in my yeah, three Mortifies in my sideboard. Still trying to build this up. And it's really just going to be whatever... Uh, place for my meta at the the shop there where i play at but uh it's uh it's interchangeable i mean you, you basically pick the the best black white cards and and potentially blue uh if you really want to play them that way uh some lands just have a basic plains and a basic swamp and then uh we have we have a few incidentals here uh we just since we just need blue we're playing two glacial fortress and four hollowed fountain and then for other blue, we're playing three Drawn Catacombs and four Watery Grave. Uh, we are playing the playset of Godless Shrines and Isolated Chapels. And then as a one of, uh, I guess it's kind of a one of fun of, I'm not sure if this is the right the right card to be playing here since we are playing a lot of things that are one, two, three, uh, and four and five. So as far as permanents go, um, it, it does it would kind of stink try to, to curve it out, but... Uh, Blastlands pretty good, so uh, it turns out that if you can, say against uh, like an Esper control list or an Esper hero list, being able to kill their hero or kill uh, their four drops uh, and reanimate them is pretty good. So I mean, it, it's had its uses. It might just be better suited as like an Arch of Araska, but I wanted to try this card and see if there's anything we could do in standard. So, as that being said, I think we're gonna see if we can't. Uh, I've been playing it in ranked. Uh, I'm not sure. I've beat a couple of tier one decks. Uh, I beat mono red earlier. Beat mono blue earlier. Um, I did lose to an Esper list, but it was not a traditional Esper control list. 
Uh, I was playing Terramander, so I'm not sure what was happening. But uh, uh, so this seems really good. I really like to have a wall. I'm on the play, so uh, we can go wander on four if we have to, and then five and six. So it's actually not bad. So I'm gonna play the Hollowed Fountain first, so we can play Tide Taker on two and not take any damage. I've played against a couple of Teamer Reclamation decks. Um, <laughs> the the matchup for that seems atrocious, so I would not recommend playing this um, if that is what is at your local meta. So go ahead and get in for two here. So, kind of nice making their opponent cast Radical Idea on their turn. If they want to flash it back, they're going to have to tap out. Uh, that's okay. So, again, we have the Wanderer and Command the Dread Horde. So, I think... We're actually going to... Yep, we're going to be shocking a couple things into play here. So... I wonder if our, our opponent potentially playing... Is it Drake's? Oh, Nusahili combo. Okay. So, it's kind of nice. It makes it harder uh, with War of the Spark now being released to put an opponent on a specific um, deck. So, We are just going to play this. We're not going to sacrifice anything, I don't believe. Actually, should have attacked with this first and then. So, Sealy's at five. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and... That's all right. We'll go ahead and sacrifice that. And there's Barrier Bones. Would have liked to have had that um, to begin with but it's okay. Our opponent, let's see. They have three cards in their graveyard, so they'd have to ramp up pretty good uh, to be able to kill Bantu. So if we draw a land here, we could actually see. Yeah, and, and we do just tuck. Uh... I believe the right play is almost always tucking the god. Uh, our opponent can't figure out what's going on here because uh, the Wanderer actually states that uh, you prevent all non-combat damage. So uh, it's a good thing to point out that we played that Wanderer before, uh, before casting that bond too. So. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and play this Barrier Bones. Uh, we'll take that Godless Shrine. Uh, do we need... We don't need a shotgun to play, so we'll go ahead and enter up tap. But we are going to try to kill this Sahili. Not sure what the opponent is up to so and I think would really like to draw um, some like pinpoint removal uh, Liliana's you know the edict or a uh, cast down is, is pretty good right here. So being able to shoot one. So our opponent's just trying to find answers now. There's no creatures though that we can buy back and all we have is a tithe taker. So we do still have another setup here. 
so ooh that's good uh yeah I think we just slam the Oketra our opponent can't just actually cannot allow Sahili to die so we're gonna have to keep making tokens to just try to get in there If something happens, uh, we, I may actually not uh, tuck either one of these when, if they die. We do have command the dread horde, so if our opponent keeps keeps trying to draw cards, so. I think they're getting kind of annoyed with the fact that uh, they can't actually remove anything. So, traditionally in blue red decks, the uh, yeah, we may have to wrath here. Uh, what do we want to do? So, we can still Wrath. Yeah, let's draw a card first. Play land. Um, so, one, two, three. So we have a two in front of it. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so they could block. Yeah, it's fine. If they block Bond 2, I'm okay with that. Yeah. So the four, so two damage could get into the Wanderer. Okay, they're churning through cards. With 34, yeah, there's Drake. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Uh, it might be a minute here before we can actually pull this off correctly, but, ooh. That thing has flying, huh? One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Going to attack me, huh? Yep, that's fine. Yeah, we just wrath here. Uh, so we're gonna wrath. Um, I'm actually going to decline one, two, three, four, five, six, and one. Decline this here and decline that. So we're actually going to command the dread horde by try to buy back absolutely everything. And then cast Wall of Runes, make a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, hopefully our opponent doesn't get something stupid. We do get to get back their, uh, their creatures, which is kind of cool. So we'll get a Crackling Drake, draw a card, and then we will also get an Electromancer. So, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 1. And it looks like our opponent's not on, uh, so they so they are on Drake's, but no arc lights, or they're just <laughs> really unlucky and uh, haven't seen an arc light phoenix yet. So feel bad if they have like spell pierce. Haven't seen, really have not seen, haven't seen any counters. So we're gonna go ahead and play this isolated chapel. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and. Uh, just go ahead and go nuts here. Uh, my graveyard, yep. Let's go Tide Taker. I wish there was just a select all creatures button for this. Uh, creatures and planeswalkers. So, 
We made no no concession, but uh, so let's go ahead. Uh, I want to surveil one first, then crackling Drake, then bot two. So. We're gonna sacrifice the barrier of bones. So there's just no reason to keep it around uh, to the Bantu. So uh, Kaya's Wrath. No, I don't want that now. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna fill up that graveyard. Get this Crackling Drake going here. Uh, we got a moment of craving. Uh, so let's see. Um, well, we're gonna go one, two, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And this barrier of bones. Yeah, we'll we'll draw three. And another commander ride hard. Uh let's play this wall of runes. Make ourselves a four four. Think, there's not really anything that we're too terribly looking for. Save the moment craving just in case they do have Arclight Phoenix. Oh, so see if our opponent must have realized that uh, they need to draw their shocks. They got to be aimed at the Wanderer. So good reason for holding this one here. And having this back. Okay. So we're blocking with Crackling Drake. And. That's okay. Uh, I actually don't have to Wrath. If they attack, we don't have to Wrath. So. We're going to Moment of Craving down their, one of their servos here. And now that, uh, yeah. now the uh, Tide Taker is looking a little bit better. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we, oh, and there's two Electro Managers. There's, wasn't even paying attention. It's going to be in the corridor. Only cost, uh, Dread Horde only costs four. Uh, currently... Yeah, I don't think there's... Okay, so... Sure, you could have that. We're gonna nix the Electromancer end of turn. Yeah, you don't get anywhere by doing that, so... I'm gonna pass the blockers. Go ahead and block here. I have to do that. Uh, end of turn... Do I kit now? We have Watery Grave to untap once we buy everything back. So, uh, we have to Cleansing Nova. We just send, I think we send everything here at Sahili. We have to get this thing off the battlefield. We need them to stop creating servos and making... Yeah, sure. It dies. It's uber dead. Super dead. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and just... We're going to destroy all creatures. Seems how those artifacts are creatures. Uh, yep. Make dude... Protect our Wanderer. We're going to decline that. And we're going to decline that. We are going to go ahead and play this tapped. And in the turn. We have a moment of craving. So if they have something like. Uh, um, oh, it's Crackling Drake. That's fine. Let's say if they have something like an Electromancer. 
because we are going to command, and that's the reason why right there. So, cool part about this, guys. Kill that arc light phoenix. Do this before blocks. Yep, gotcha. Hey, what does this do? You're at three. We're gonna choose this, 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 this. Gotta slide this over a little bit. This, oh yeah, I'll take your art life units. My graver, this, 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 this. We're taking all the things. All the things. Uh, so, uh, I want, yep, I want buy two at the end. And we get a concession. Uh, so, as you can see, uh, though, I guess, is it Drake's isn't uh, the greatest, and they did fade getting um, uh, an Arclight Phoenix into the yard. Uh, it is a fun little deck. So, there's a lot of, ooh, we got a Mythic. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that you can do, and I believe that makes my playset of Kaya's. So, um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you stayed to watch that whole thing. Uh, we had pretty good control for most of that time, so uh, if you uh, have any questions, please comment. Don't worry about that. We'll uh, I'll try to get back to you as quick as possible. Maybe make a couple of changes if I do change anything. Uh, I'll let you know, and I will uh, actually link the deck list to my tapped out page, so that anybody can check it. And I believe we'll be playing this at F and M on Friday, so keep an eye out for that. We'll see how it works. So make sure you uh, like, subscribe, and uh, go check out Liberty Coins MTG for our all the videos posted weekly for FNM and any other events running there.